Hey everybody, it's Gamma X bringing you my first weekly FNM report. Now, all these FNM reports are going to be draft because that's the only format I play. Um, outside of like Commander and Sealed, I guess, but it's the only competitive format I play. Anyways, let's get right into the deck. So I drafted blue white flyers and managed to go 3 0 with this deck. Um, there's a lot of fun things going on with the deck, but I think the first thing that I should explain. Uh, is this deck has exactly 23 playables. My sealed pool has, or my sealed pool, my draft pool has exactly 23 white and blue playable cards. And the reason for that is because this is what happened in the first pack. Uh, I first picked Crested Herdcaller, second picked a Brontodon, third picked Forerunner, and just, you know, kept going with the red green dino basic strategy. Like, these picks were basically what I went for in my first pack. Anyways, from then on, in the second pack, I first picked Azor the Lawbringer. Now, I thought I was just picking it for my collection, to have as a commander. But then, I second picked this card because there was nothing great in red-green. And basically, from that point on, I kept getting cut in red and green from the left. So I was like, well... White and blue seemed open, why not just go for it? And go for it I did, and it ended perfectly. I, I cut it very close on the amount of playables. I have, I guess, technically 24 playables, because I did get another vampire zeal, but I don't usually like to run too many uh, combat tricks, so I just have the one vampire zeal in here. So yeah, it was definitely an awkward draft, but it ended up working perfectly in my favor. Managed to pull out a 3-0 with this. But anyways, let's talk about the fun things going on in this deck. Obviously, first of all, we got an Azor. That's super cool. I don't know if it's Azor or Azor. I don't know how to pronounce these things. Um, he never got to do anything. Um, well, I attacked with him once in a game. And basically, if you managed to get an attack off with him, then you, you won that game. So, yeah, the one time I got to attack with him, I won. Uh, every other time, he just got, like, Luminous Bonds or water knotted, or tapped down by a water trap weaver. There are actually a lot of things that you can do, even when you can't cast instant or sorcery spells, uh, to prevent the Azor from getting an attack in. Um, so other than that, I think the most interesting thing in this deck uh, is kind of the, the enchantments to suit up your non-flying creatures. We've got two, one with the wind. Obviously, we've got favorable winds. This is a blue-white flyers deck. I got the favorable wins to pay off. Uh, favorable wins is definitely like best with stuff like Soul of the Rapids. Anyway, um, the enchantments were definitely the power in this deck. 2-1 with the wind, favorable wins, and a curious obsession. Um, one with the wind and curious obsession, basically anything, is really good on just these bears with a slight ability. So these Sun Sentinels... 2 mana, 2-2 two, two Vigilance, that's already good, but throwing a 1 with the Wind or Curious Obsession on that is incredible. Uh, same with the Bishop's Soldier, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two Lifelink, good card, but throw 1 with the Wind on it or Curious Obsession and it just gets ridiculous. Um, I guess the only other real interesting thing in this deck, because everything else is just kind of blue-white, couple of removal spells, um... The only thing I really want to talk about is the Everdon Champion here. Now, this card looked really good at first glance to me. Uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to it. I thought this was just going to gum up the board. Let me get in there with my flyers while I block. Um, but this dies to, like, all the removal in the world. Um, even the little minus two, minus two moment of, uh, moment of whatever. The black and a colorless one. Dies to all the enchantments, dies to hunt the weak, dies to savage stomp, like, this card will not stay on the board. I really wanted it to, I guess it's it's okay if you're just trying to get rid of removal in their hand, like, basically every opponent always just killed that immediately, but still, uh, it, it did not go according to plan. Uh, so yeah, I'll just give you one more look over the whole deck. So you can see the whole list here. Shorekeeper, um, basically running it to get more things to put one with the wind on. Uh, 
Uh, and also because, you know, I don't have many other choices. I can put in a vampire zeal over it, but don't don't feel like it. Snubhorn Sentry, this is my first time I ever got to play with the card. A uh, lot better than it looked at first glance. I'm pretty sure everybody already knows that, but that card's actually pretty good. I really like Opt. Opt is just an auto-include whenever I manage to draft it. Because uh, it just gets me to wherever I need very well. Another thing worth mentioning here, this Warkite Marauder. This card is very, very good. It's kind of like a flying territorial hammer school, just because if your whole deck is a bunch of flyers, then being able to attack with it and make their reach guy or their flying guy a 0-1 with, with no abilities is kind of like just getting rid of a blocker for the turn, so it's very good. Crashing Tide was super good in this deck for tempo. You know, this card looks pretty awkward when you don't have a merfolk, but it's it's still great. Imperial Aerosaur. This was the best Imperial Aerosaur I've ever played. You know, I've played Imperial Aerosaur plenty back in Triple Exelon drafts, just in like dino decks, but I think the blue-white flyers deck is where it really, really shines. Um, just, just giving, you know, Sun Sentinel or Bishop Soldier, just whatever creature you have that doesn't have flying flying, and just bouncing right in, especially when you have favorable wins out, and then it's a 4-4, and whatever you gave flying gets plus 2, plus 2, instead of plus 1, plus 1. card was very, very good. And I guess the very last thing to mention here, just before we close off the video for the day, was uh, Entrancing Melody. Um, this card underperformed a lot for me. I feel like this deck was a lot more aggressive than I initially anticipated, uh, because at first I was just thinking of, you know, my Azor and Soul of the Rapids, just the stuff that I got in the Rivals pack was a little slower. All the Ixalan stuff's what really sped it up. Um, so yeah, with, with a really aggressive deck, Entrancing Melody isn't that good just because it costs so much mana to, to take anything. Um, and definitely the most awkward moments were when they played, you know, their 5-mana crazy 4-4 four, four trample, double damage to players, dinosaur. They're charging Tuscanons and stuff like that, and I'm just sitting there with this in my hand and only like 4 lands out. Uh, definitely underperformed. Sorry, that was my cat. Freaking out. Um, but yeah, that's that's the whole deck. Um, 9 Island, 7 Planes. That's pretty standard stuff. But yeah, thanks everybody uh, for watching, and I will see you all next week for the next Rivals Vixalon Draft Report.